Welcome to Anglicare Church to You. And welcome to today's service recorded at St. James Chapel at Castle Hill. Service. Welcome to church, everybody. We're so glad you can join us today. We're going to sing some praises to God. We're going to hear from his word to us, and we're going to spend some time praying to him. Let's begin with this hymn of praise. of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed me of sin the double cure cleanse me from its guilt and power not the labors of my hands can fulfill the Lord's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless look to thee for grace. While I to the fountain fly, wash me, Savior, or I die. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyelids close in death, when I soar through tracks unknown, See thee on thy judgment throne, rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. A collect for Advent. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came among us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's join together and confess our sins. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done. We have followed our own ways and the desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. Yet, good Lord, have mercy on us. Restore those who repent according to your promises declared to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly and obedient life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who truly repent and sincerely believe your gospel, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, 
Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's confess what we believe as Christians and join together with our brothers and sisters around the world as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. We're now going to hear a Bible reading. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn. A son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. We're now going to hear a message about the word of God. Now, can you believe it's Christmas time? Christmas is an exciting time, and it is really the only time of the year when people as a whole think about giving. Oh, the traffic and crowds at retail stores back up this incredible truth. I'm, I'm sure hope that Christmas Day doesn't become known only because it's the only day that the shops are closed. I'd like to tell you a story today about a man named Bill. Now, Bill really loves Christmas. He loved Christmas as a child when he would, you know, wake up his parents at the crack of dawn to open his presents. And Bill loves Christmas today as an adult. As a, as a matter of fact, Bill probably loves Christmas more today because now Bill just loves to give presents to his children. And he has a real knack of knowing exactly what each of his five children want and need. 
Bill spends the year, the entire year, shopping, buying, hiding, wrapping the presents. And Bill just loves shopping for Christmas. And he's certain that what he has purchased will bring his children great joy. And so when Christmas Eve comes around and the little ones are all nestled in their beds, Bill grabs all the presents out of hiding and very neatly places them under the tree. And with a wave of excitement, Bill goes to bed. And as he dozes off to sleep, he feels great, convinced that all the effort and sacrifice has been worth it. Tomorrow, Bill knows he has bought his children gifts that will bring them happiness and joy, gifts that they need. And finally, the sun rises. It's Christmas morning. His children get up. They hug him, wish him a happy Christmas, and everyone surrounds that Christmas tree perfectly decorated with lights and tinsel and ornaments from years past and even new ones. And each person sitting enjoying the glow of that Christmas morning, you know, it looks like a Norman Rockwell painting. I mean, this Christmas morning would be absolutely perfect, (laughs) except one thing. Bill's children simply refuse to open their presents. Bill's children simply wake up, take hold of their presents. They say, oh, nice bow, Dad. Sure, pretty wrapping this year. And they never unwrap them. And as the scene fades, you see Bill with tears in his eyes, a figurative knife in his heart as his children walk away, leaving their unwrapped presents sitting still under that Christmas tree. Now, of course, Bill is just a fictitious father, one that's, you know, I've made up. But there is a father that I know, and he is our Heavenly Father. A father who has sacrificed greatly for all his children to provide them with a gift that he knows they will really need. A gift like a diamond sparkling in the sun has many facets. But tragically, like Bill, our Heavenly Father watches with tears in his eyes and a knife in his heart as his children say, Nice box, pretty paper but they never unwrap the presence that God himself has bought for them through his son. So why don't they unwrap them? Why do so many for so many years come to this Christmas time, receive gifts from God and leave them unwrapped lying under the figurative Christmas tree? The only reason I can see this happening is because they don't know the cost of that present. It's usefulness and the sentiment and feelings behind it. You know what? I, I should do a study at Christmas time to research two things. Which presents do people open first? And how many open the card before the present? I think that most people, especially children, open presents that resemble something valuable. Normally, you know, the biggest presents or the presents that look like, I don't know, a bike or a computer game. They leave the the smallest ones to last. But these may be actually the most valuable or the most useful of all the gifts. In fact, the gifts that I have treasured the most are back from my 21st birthday. And they've been, of all things, a manicure set and an umbrella. There you go. And what about the card? Do we slowly read the message in the card and soak in the sentiment by considering what the sender went through or what they were thinking when they sent that card to you? Many of us have put a lot of time in finding just the right card with just the right words, the right pictures, and then the personal message 
written thoughtfully, penned in our own hand. In fact, I have a card of encouragement from an old Sunday school teacher who has since passed away, and yet it was written in her own handwriting, and so it means a lot to me, and in fact, a lot more now. So I think, what kind of gift is a dirty little child birthed in the back streets of a small, insignificant town in the Middle East amongst a a stall full of animals to a young couple of teenagers with no prestige, no position, and you call this the saviour of the world? But we learn from Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, God prepared the world for just the right moment to enter the world. And from John 3, 16, many of us know this verse. God loved us so much that he paid the ultimate price for us, his son. He didn't just spend the year shopping for our gift. He actually spent all of eternity for just the right moment, just the right present. And we get plenty of well-intentioned people giving presents that we don't need. And yet this present is the best present that God could give us because it's just what we need. Someone once said, and it now features on quite a few Christmas cards, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, I believe God would have sent an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent an entertainer. But our actual greatest need was forgiveness. And so God sent us a saviour. The greatest present for you is not under a Christmas tree. He lay under a star. It's not placed at the base of the tree. It's placed in a manger. It's not wrapped in shiny wrapping paper with a beautiful gold ribbon and a bow. He's wrapped in swaddling cloths, a a scrap off-cut piece of linen. And it's not a gift of a spontaneous thought by someone who only thinks what you like for Christmas. Jesus is a gift given to you, planned in eternity past, from a heavenly Father who loves you and eternally knows and loves you and knows what you need. Unto you a Saviour has been born. He is Christ the Lord. So today, open your present. See what's inside. Your greatest need is met in the Lord Jesus. Well, isn't it great on Christmas morning to have your loved ones, you've given a present to open it, and as they do, you see the joy and excitement that that gift has brought them, and it makes you feel so good. It really is more blessed to give than to receive. Well, this year, your Heavenly Father is equally anticipating your joy as you open his gift to you. If you have never unwrapped that gift of salvation that Jesus came to bring, unwrap that gift today. Take this challenge, take this invitation and make this Christmas a special beginning to a new life a new life saved by Jesus. Have a wonderful Christmas. God bless. Let's sing together our next carol, O Holy Night. O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. A 
We're now going to spend some time in prayer. Let's say the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. A prayer for right priorities. Almighty God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong and nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through the things temporal that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's join together in this prayer of thanksgiving. Most merciful Father, we humbly thank you for all your gifts so freely bestowed on us, for life and health and safety, for power to work and leisure to rest, and for all that is beautiful in creation and in the lives of men and women, we praise and glorify your holy name. But above all, we thank you for your spiritual mercies in Christ Jesus our Lord, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
creation story now proclaim the Messiah's birth come and worship worship Christ the newborn come and worship worship Thank you for joining with us today. We hope you've been encouraged to trust in Jesus and to give thanks to God. Let's conclude our service by saying the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We're so glad that you've joined us today. We hope you will come again next time.